peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is the McCall's 7319 Sew Along and Pattern Review. I love this pattern, stuff right, right from the get-go. I bought it a very long time ago, I think it's quite an old, mm, when I say a long time ago, seven, eight years ago? Possibly? Definitely since I started, so yes, between the in, in the last seven to eight years, but sort of like the, the longer ago portion of that that obviously indicates that. Yeah, I bought this pattern quite a while ago. I bought it on the strength of this image here. This is the dress that I wanted. I loved this. This is nice, but as we all know, I prefer much fuller skirts, even though some of you guys don't like them on me. I like them on me. I prefer much, much fuller skirts. And this is the dress that I wanted. I have made six of this dress now. I don't know if I have any images of the first three. I have definitely shown them to you in waffles but I don't think I took any photos of them. The very first one I made was with a polyester jersey that had a really big alphabet print all over it with flowers on it which was really pretty but it was polyester and it was horrible to wear. I used that as wearable muslin fodder for a polyester velvet that I was going to make my first dressmaker's ball out dress out of and I did actually end up wearing this dress to the ball. I think I have some photos of that. Then I had some stripy kind of abstract print jersey that I still have the remnants of and I would like to chop apart to make into pyjamas because I made the maxi version of this dress and absolutely hated it on me and it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. I think I turned and hemmed it like five times and the hems just really, it was just a nightmare, total nightmare. So I'm going to butcher that one for parts but I don't, I think I filmed a waffle but I don't think I've, I've taken any photos of those three. My problem with it was that this is the only skirt option. Now, looking at both these illustrations and the line drawings on the back, they look very full. They There is gathering at the midsection of the waistline of this skirt panel piece, but this is a very narrow panel piece. The impression that the line drawings give is that it's a much fuller, fuller skirt. And as I say, this is the one that I wanted. I made it up like this and it just wasn't full enough for me so when I did my dressmaker's ball dress I slashed and spread and I gave myself extra width in the skirt but I also kept it so that I could still cut the single panel piece out of a folded with the fabric so it still wasn't very very wide which as we know is what I prefer. I left it alone for probably like three or four years but I knew I liked this dress and I had some other random viscose jersey that I got from the textile centre. It was leopard print with giant orchids on it and it sounded really weird and it looked really weird. I thought you know what I've got five meters of this I'm going to experiment. So I decided to slash and spread this skirt panel to get it to look more like this. So I've ended up with a skirt that has a centre panel which is gathered and then two side panels. So rather than just the one panel like the pattern would have you make, I have made mine much much fuller and much much more fabric hungry. So it did take the entire five metres of fabric to make that blue orchid and leopard print dress. That dress actually came out beautifully. I am so surprised by how much I like that dress and I think a lot of you guys were as well when you initially saw the fabric I know for a fact Rachel was just like ooh. then when the dress was made up it's worked really really well as I say it wasn't precious fabric to me it was fabric for me to experiment with because I had bought three of the Lady McElroy viscose jersey with different prints on them I got the Savannah that you're seeing here the Cobra Corsage and the Foliage Canopy when I had kind of properly sat down and thought about this there is an underbodice layer of this dress and I was just like well you know what you don't actually see any of that I could cut, totally cut that out of a plain fabric so with my Cobra Corsage one I cut it out of plain black viscose jersey which was a mistake because of the weight of the skirt it pulls the underbodice down and shows it under the overlays at the waist on the front and the back and it's not the end of the world and I'm considering putting a tack in it but I'm a little bit worried that that might pull and make things look awkward. So I just adjust every now and again, but I, I, I think I can probably tack it into place so that it won't show. But it was something that I just thought for the next time, I'm going to make the underbodice out of cotton jersey, which is a lot more stable. And then I will do the overlays, the skirt and the sleeves in my patterned viscose jersey, which is much, much drapier. That, as I say, that was the problem with the third dress that I'd made is that I did it with viscose jersey and it was just so heavy and it just, it was a maxi dress. It just kept dragging it down and just growing and growing and growing every time I tried 
tried to wear it. So yeah, I decided that the underlayer of this dress going forward could be made from a cotton jersey, much more stable, and it's worked perfectly. I think I have finally achieved my dress of dreams with this pattern. The pattern envelope says that it's designed for medium weight, moderate stretch knits. And there is, as ever, like this, the stretch guide on the back. So it's four inches, 10 centimeters, crosswise, folded knit must stretch from here to here. So my viscose jerseys are super, super, super stretchy and they were super choice to start on this one, but I really wanted to make it out of them. The suggested fabrics just says jersey and cotton knits. <laughs> I think, as I mentioned, if you want to try and do it with a lighter weight, super stretchy fabric like I have, then the underlining, the under bodice, needs to be in one of the more stable cotton knits. Yes, I love this pattern. I do still think that the envelope is incredibly misleading. The pattern would have you put five inches of ease. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say wearing ease because design ease, looking at this dress on this lady and looking at all of the drawings that they've done, it clearly goes in at the middle. It's clearly meant to be skimming, if not fitted at the middle. Design ease, there, I think there's meant to be zero design ease on this. Wearing ease, this pattern has given you five inches of wearing ease at the waist, which is mad. It's absolutely mad. I don't understand it at all. It's a knit dress. I know not all knit dresses have to have negative or, or zero ease in them. I do know that you can have knit dresses that skim over that have positive ease in them. I know that there are certain knits that won't stretch particularly brilliantly so that you have to have positive ease in them but this dress I think should have negative ease in it and they've given you five inches of positive ease at the waist which is madness absolute madness they've also given you half an inch of positive ease at the bust now when I traced this out like I say it was probably about five or six years ago now and at the time I had a smaller bust so I had done the size 12 for the bust it would get it gave you a finished measurement of 36 and a half inches I think I'm doing this from memory so my bust currently is 38 inches sometimes 39 depending on which bra I'm wearing but the bra that I want to wear with this dress gives me a 38 inch bust and that's just because I've put weight on it's not because it's a padded bra or anything I've just put weight on over the last couple of years and thankfully proportionally so I have three and a half inches of negative ease at my bust and I don't think this looks too tight. I like the fit that I've achieved with this. I think it's very, very nice. I ended up going for a size six at the waist. The size six is designed to be for a 23 inch waist and the finished garment measurement is 28 inches, which again is five inches of ease, uh, positive ease at the waist of this dress. There isn't, I mean, no <laughs> again no so i've actually gone for a size six which is 28 inches finished garment measurement which is my actual waist measurement at the moment sometimes it's around 27 and a half but majority of the time it's 28 if not a little bit more depending on how much i've eaten that day so i've gone for zero ease at the waist so i've got negative ease at the bust by three and a half inches i have zero ease at the waist and I the the hips I think even the uh, the hip for the 14 on here is for a 38 inch hip and the hip the hip measurement for a 14 on this pattern piece was 52 inches so the hips are very very forgiving plus I've added all of the flare to mine so I really didn't need to worry about the hips but my hip measurement is 44 inches which puts me squarely into the size 20 sometimes it's 45 which would put me between the 20 and the 22 in the McCall's patterns so again I think that the actual pattern envelope is incredibly misleading I, I, there is absolutely no way this lady has five inches of wearing ease at her waist we had this conversation with the 8145 jumper that i did the other day which had seven and a half inches of it e e wearing uh, or wearing ease in it and it's it's just madness it's absolutely madness i what what i what I don't mind is if they put an accurate representation of what they're telling you to make on the envelope. Totally fine. Not a problem. If they only put the line drawings on, I have a little bit of an issue because it's like the line drawings are always not overly accurate representations of what it's actually going to look like on a human body. But when they put a dress like this on the envelope on this lady, which clearly fits her much better than if you made your size according to what they say you should do you're not going to end up with this it's just not going to happen and that infuriates me because it's just setting people up for failure which is why i do these so long so i get to rant about it <laughs> i 
knew I loved this dress and I wanted to persevere with this because I knew that I could get myself to this dress here this is what I wanted as I said right from the get-go this is the one that I was like Ooh, that's nice if i had just seen this i'd never have bought this pattern but this was like yeah this is what i want i like this a lot this is one of the ones that as i say i've made six of them now and i've finally got the perfect fit the, the cobra corsage one is good i am considering remaking it with the cotton jersey layer underneath instead of the viscose jersey underlining just because i so prefer the fit of this one to that one but again that is excessive i would i donate the dress so I, you know I, I was thinking about cutting it up for parts but I don't think I would I think I would donate that dress because it is a beautiful dress but yeah I much prefer the fit of this one and how this one feels to be worn so I'm considering remaking that one if I can't get the tacking to work to hide that little bit then I'm thinking about re redoing that one I actually haven't lengthened the pattern on this one at all I haven't added any length to the bodice which is something that I usually always do and surprisingly this one does have length in the shorten lines in fact I did do that with my blue orchid and leopard print one and again I used the viscose jersey for the underlying underlayer and I again that kind of like dra dragged down so I took that inch of length out thinking it would be okay for the cobra corsage one and it wasn't and this one I've just not added any any length to it at all I think this this is I'm getting away with it the cotton layer this is an inch above my natural waist but what they don't do is they don't add any lengthen or shorten lines to the overlay pieces so if I had brought this down I would be in danger of it just poking peeking out from the bottom here and there aren't any lengthen or shorten lines on these overlay pieces as I mentioned I think I get away with it I think it's it's fine it goes in at my waist even though this actual piece here is sitting well above my actual waist i'm not going to fuss with it anymore i think i've achieved the look that i want to achieve with this pattern as i mentioned i have slashed and spread the skirt pattern pieces which i will talk you through i did this quite a while ago as an experiment a couple of years ago at least as an experiment and i'm very happy with the results i wore the dress a couple of times and a few of you guys asked for a sew along because of the overlays being slightly confusing rather than do all the work for the skirt in full size because i've already done it all and it took a lot of tape and a lot of paper i did it in miniature for you you will get to see how it's done i mean you can find loads of videos and slashing and spreading but i'll talk you through my thought process on the skirt piece and how i got it to look how i wanted it to look i love it absolutely love it i am so so pleased that i did it yes it takes a lot of fabric let's see i had five meters of this cotton jersey i'd bought three initially because that's what this pattern calls for yeah so c 60 inches wide three yards just under three meters of fabric because i've added so much fullness to the skirt i buy five meters of fabric i have managed to get this dress a renfrew t-shirt and an adrian blouse out of it i did have to buy an extra 50 centimeters of fabric for the adrian blouse sleeves so i had five and a half meters and i got three garments out of the that that length of fabric and the reason i was able to get away with that is because of cutting out the way that you cut this out there were kind of bits and pieces where i could squeeze t-shirt panels in around the where the skirts got cut out and things like that i have cut the two back side panels of the skirt upside down in this print and the fullness of this skirt if i hadn't have told you that you would never have noticed but i have cut them upside down so i could nest those pattern pieces a little bit better everything that counts i have cut out as much as i could with the birds the right way up there's a bird here that's flying upwards because these are cut that way on grain they're cut differently but again this is such a busy print that again until i point things like that out to you guys you're not going to be like birds are upside down my birds are the right way up on my sleeves i was careful about these kind of pieces where it would be very obvious if the birds were upside down and the center front skirt and the, the center back skirt and the skirt sides for the front are all cut with the print in the right direction but the center back sorry the side back skirt pieces are cut upside down and again if i hadn't have told you i doubt you'd have even noticed <laughs> this pattern the very first time i did it the overlays are confusing to a degree i having made it again this time around and the you know these this last three that i've made i found it a lot easier i think that's because I'd made the pattern but the very first time I got it out it was really confusing as to which bit that I should be finishing and which bit I should be gathering and I remember vividly finishing the wrong edge and gathering the wrong part so I hopefully I have 
explain quite well in the So Along coming up how those particular pieces get used and put together. At one point you have to put the right side of something to the wrong side of something because when you flip it over they end up in the right direction. So again that confused me to begin with. I think it's just one of those things that when you see the pattern pieces they, they don't look intuitively like what they are until you start actually examining where the shoulder seam is, the armhole, the side seam. The, when you work out where all those pieces are and how they want you to put them together that's when it's just like oh, I've got it but I do remember the very first time making this dress I was very confused and I got a lot of things wrong so again that was why a few of you guys have asked for this so along so hopefully everything is helpful i have at least two more of these planned i as i say am debating about buying more cobra corsage and making another one they do the cobra corsage on a cream base as well which i think could be very pretty i know there are other dresses that i can make with visco's jersey i just really really like this one i really enjoy wearing it i feel it's it's secret pajamas it's comfortable with the cotton jersey layer underneath i have the factor that i talk about with my scuba dresses not quite to the same extent but i still feel kind of like supported and sucked in way more than the two dresses that have got the viscose jersey as the lining pieces so that's another reason i'm considering remaking the cobra corsage but yeah i i i feel really elegant in this dress but also so 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 comfortable i was always a little bit worried about ruching at the side of a bodice especially over the waist i i was worried that that would add bulk but i actually think it's a really flattering look i'm gonna stand up again yeah i was always worried that like ruching in the sides here would would add more volume to this area but i do think it drapes really nicely i think it's a very pretty look i'm you know that's another another reason i'm really glad that i've persevered with this because i do think this is a flattering shape on me if you want longer sleeves it would be really easy just to add length to these sleeves or sub in some longer sleeves that fit you well from a different pattern that would be really easy to do i kind of like the three quarter length sleeve it's 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 far enough down that i can grab hold of it whilst i put a cardigan on so that they don't end up bunched up here i think in the kind of autumn months it's kind of nice to have sort of these bracelet length they're slightly shorter than bracelet length, but these kind of three quarter length sleeves, I do think they're very pretty. I love the V neckline at the front and back. I don't think I mentioned it in the summer long. I do mention putting a pin into the panel pieces so that you remember which is the front and which is the back. I always pin, put a pin in my back pieces. It's just a habit that I've gotten into because a lot of these pattern pieces look very, very similar once you've taken the tissue off. So I put a pin into the back, like the back overlay, the back panel, top panel piece and the back skirt piece, just so that I remember that that all goes together once you've taken those pins out because obviously you don't want to wear a dress with pins in it i have then sewn like a tiny little blue cross stitch in the back neckline on the interior just so that when i go to put this on i'm like ah that's the back this is the front because they look very 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 similar very similar <laughs> i love this dress i have as i say at least two more planned foliage canopy and a white viscose that's up there with red roses on it that I got from the So Southampton meetup. I only have three meters of that one so I'm going to have to be really careful. But I'm going to do the same thing that I did with this one and use cotton jersey for the underlining because it's worked perfectly. I don't know if it's come across but I am in love with this dress. It is comfortable, it's pretty, it's twirly, it's secret pajamas and it's elegant. I, I love wearing it. I love wearing it around the house and I will happily wear this out in public as well so highly highly recommend this dress. On that note let's get started. The first thing that you want to do is iron your pattern tissue nice and flat. I haven't done this because I've actually already traced this pattern out but I thought I would start the sew along where I usually do so do as I say not as I am showing you but iron your pattern tissue nice and flat because it will help you get an accurate trace. I mean as you can see here with these creases in if I put a paper over the top it might kind of like just distort the sizing a little bit this is actually not too bad some of them are much much worse really like screwed up but you want this to be nice and flat next up we need to work out what size we're going to trace so according to the pattern i would need a size 16 for the bust size 14 for the waist and a size 20 for the hips i have the pattern bundle that goes from the size 6 to the 14 the bust measurement is on pattern piece number one let's pretend i am a size 14 which is for a 36 inch bust the size 14 has a 36 and a half inch finished garment measurement so there is half an inch of wearing ease built into this now bearing in mind this is a knit dress i person that's not actually too bad but i personally 
kind of like negative ease in my knit dresses especially over the bust area it's just a personal preference of mine it's up to you as you guys know i have made this dress five times so far and i have another one two three three planned at least another three planned if my voice went far away i was looking over at my fabric stash <laughs> yes i have another three planned i have decided to go for a size 12 for the bust which gives you a finished measurement of 34 and a half inches that gives me negative three and a half inches of wearing ease which some people might say is excessive but i really like the fit of the dress that i the dresses that i've made so i'm going to go for that again Ease and fit are totally personal preferences and you have the information here and on the back of the packet so it gives you an idea of what the pattern is suggesting that you do although I don't think that the pattern envelope, the garments that are made up are honestly representative if they had made the size that her measurements come out at I, I don't think they're honestly representative I think they fudge it and put it put put a dress on the model that looks best on her but the back of the envelope will tell you what size they think you should make the pattern tissue will tell you what size the garment will come out to so as I say I'm doing a size 12 for the bust which is a 34 and a half inch finished garment measurement and the waist is on pattern piece number two and for pattern piece number two so I am falling into the size 14 for the waist, which is 28 inches. The 14 on here, the finished garment measurement is 33 and a half inches. I'm sorry, but there is not, you know, there's not, hang on, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. There's not five and a half inches of ease at her waist. There isn't. It goes in. It does go in. It's just, this is what bugs me about these that it's just not representative of what the pattern envelope is telling you to make. So again, I have looked through this and I have gone by my finished garment measurement and I've actually gone for a size 10, which is a 30 inches. In all honesty, I am not ruling out actually going down to a size 6, which is a 28 inch finished garment measurement. And I think I, when I sew this dress up I actually sew the side seams with quite a lot larger seam allowance than the 5 eighths of an inch because I do find that 30 inches is still a little big for me because as I say my waist is 28 and 30 inches is giving me two inches of positive ease on a knit garment and I just I like how mine fit as I've said but I do sew the side seams with a much larger seam allowance so I'm actually going to trim mine down make it a size six which is going to be a 28 inch finish measurement which is actually zero ease because that is my waist measurement the hip measurement is here as well just on pattern piece number two I mean you don't really necessarily need to worry about the hip measurements as I say mine puts me in a size 20 44 inch hips put me in a size 20 which I don't have the size 14 for 38 inch hips gives you a finished measurement of 52 and a half so there's lots of wearing ease in that then the other thing to look at is on the sleeve you've got the finished garment measurements here again this is a stretch and I like my sleeves to be quite fitted so I'm, I'm doing a size 12 because I've got the size 12 at the bust that comes out at 12 and a quarter inch finish measurement my upper arm is 13 inches so there's negative ease there which gives me the fit that I like now the other thing is this skirt <laughs> This is the only skirt piece in this pattern, this one here. Yes, it does look like this. It does not look like this. I want this look. There is a gathering section at the top of this pattern piece. So um, this actually becomes even narrower once it's put in. If you look at these line drawings, there is a lot of fullness in all of these, a lot of fullness that is just, it's not there. This skirt piece and this skirt piece are meant to be the same. It's nonsense. So I think that, to be fair, I'm glad that they did it because if I hadn't seen this one, I wouldn't have bought this pattern. If it, if it was this one, I would not have bought this pattern. This is what I wanted. This is what I was going for. The very first time that I made this, I traced this pattern out and then added, slashed and spread and added the flare that I wanted so I could still cut this on a single layer of fabric so it was still one pattern piece on a layer of fabric that wasn't enough fullness for me so this is my and this is where i need an overhead camera to tip you back a bit so to give you an idea 
this is my center front skirt piece here and we can already see i mean I'm, there's already a, a ton of fullness there and then this is my sky, skirt side pieces you can see this is where the original skirt stops and that's all the fullness that i've added this ends up looking like this the original pattern piece ends up looking like this so if you want this this sew along will work for the original dress piece that you just won't need to seam your skirt pieces together not a problem but if you if you want this look then just trace the original pattern piece out as is and you're done if you want this look you're going to need to trace out your pattern piece and then we're going to slash and spread i've also made just so you know i've also made my skirt piece two inches longer than the abc skirt piece so the a b and c and i haven't done this for the maxi one i think that i wouldn't be able to get the fullness of this skirt on the width of fabric with maxi length because it would be really really full at the bottom i personally like it sort of like the top of the calf length so i've added two inches to the length and then i've added a whole bunch of fullness which again i'm going to show you how i do that so you need to trace out pattern piece number two and then we are and then add two inches to the length and then i'll show you how we slash and spread and i'm going to do that on a smaller scale because it ended up using a lot of paper and a lot of tape and i don't want to waste any of that but i will show you how i achieve that look the important thing is you need to put in your notches you also need to put in your notches at the top here and the little circle the waistline you need to mark in and there's 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 little dots on the side here all those markings are incredibly important for getting the overlays and stuff to line up so you want to make sure that you're including all of those markings into your tracing the next thing i'm going to show you is how to splash and spread your skirt so that you end up with something much much fuller that looks like this okay so we're not even working in half scale we're just working in miniature but i have drawn out the basic shape of the skirt piece i have put in the markings the notches and then the gathering points and i have also marked in the seam allowance along the top waistline here which i hope you can just about see i have also then basically when i did it on my actual pattern piece i think i did this every inch but i've done it kind of like every half inch i've drawn a line from the waist down to the hem and the at the top here they're half an inch apart apart from that last one but at the bottom they do kind of get slightly wider and it, this is again i am just guessing as to how this is i've seen this done this is how i'm doing it it was it was random totally random on my main size piece i did it like i said i think i did it every inch and on this one i've done it every half inch so i've ended up with one two three four five six seven lines that we're going to slash and spread up so I'm going to cut my pattern piece out. This is the cut on the fold edge, which I will mark in. So this is my centre front edge, which is to be cut on the fold. So I'll mark that in. So we're going to need another scrap piece of paper. And you want a fairly large scrap piece of paper because we're going to be adding quite a lot of width to this pattern piece. You're also going to want some tape as well. So what we're going to do is we are going to snip into the lines at the waistline up to the seam allowance but not through it. That's the important point because we need to be able to swivel at those points. So we're clipping up to but not through the seam allowance the lines that we've drawn up to the seam allowance of the waist and then next we are going to cut up to but not through the line that we have drawn from the hem of the skirt up to the seam allowance at the waist so we're creating like a hinge now i did this one at a time because i ended up with it being quite unwieldy to start with so use your best judgment but what we're going to do now is we are going to tape down our centre front cut on the fold edge. We're taping that down so that's all nice and flat. And we've created a hinge at the top of our pattern piece because we've cut down to the seam allowance at the waistline and up to the seam allowance at the waistline but not through it. So the next thing we need to do is add some fullness. Now I think when I did mine before I did two inches. So I'm just going to do an inch here to give you an idea. So I am literally putting my ruler, it would help if it was in shot, wouldn't it? So 
we're adding fullness to the bottom of this skirt so like I said I think I did two inches on my actual skirt but on this one that would be way too much so we're going to do like um, an inch so I've got my ruler at the bottom edge of the cut line of our first hinge piece on our skirt and I've just marked an inch away from that and I'm going to take down the next piece so I've got the corner point of my skirt meeting up with that one inch mark and I'm going to tape that down and then I want to cut up to my next hinge at the waist and again we're cutting up to but not through so next we're going to do exactly the same thing I'm going to mark an inch away from that corner of that bottom skirt piece and then we're going to tape down that cut line there we want to make sure everything's lying nice and flatly at the top as well tape that down a little bit of tape at the top obviously this is why I'm doing this in like miniature because if I was doing this in in large it would be more difficult to see and also I'd be using so much tape and I've obviously already done this so I'm just going to continue doing this the whole way around Okay, so as you can see, we've added a giant amount of fullness to this. If you were doing this in large scale, again, you probably would have more tape on this particular piece. I decided that I was going to use the gather point, which is one of the little circles that we marked, as my new seam for my skirt front and skirt side pieces. Depending on how much fullness you've got in your, or you've added to your new skirt, you may not need to put in a new seam if you've not added too much fullness, but you've got to bear in mind the width of fabric, because this is going to be cut on the fold, or you could add a centre front seam. But you need to bear in mind the amount of fabric that you have, you know, amount of width you've added and the fabric that you're going to use so I decided that what I would do is from my gather point at the top which is the small circle I was going to use that as my new style line as it were so I marked in that as my new you know that was going to be my new seam and again depending on how much fullness you've added you're going to want to check that this width here is going to fit onto a folded in half piece of fabric so you're going to want to make sure that from the cut on the fold mark to the edge of your fabric that you are going to be able to fit that onto a width of fabric if this is too wide then you just bring your 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 new cutting line in a little bit now because I ended up with a pattern piece that was just so full of tape and so you know so unwieldy I decided to retrace it which is why I've marked that line in red because I'm going to put a new piece of paper over I'm gonna need a bigger piece of paper if I'd have kept the original piece with all the tape and stuff on it if I'd folded it up it would have been really difficult to get it you know to get it flat when I wanted to use it again and this is a pattern that I love so I knew I was going to use it quite a lot so I'm going to trace this new pat these two new pattern pieces out. So I'm going to trace that red line to start with, and then we're going to trace in the waistline. And again, we're going to put in the notches and the details. So we're going to gather to there. I'm going to put in the new centre front, cut on the fold and we're going to need to like just even out that hemline this one's fairly easy because it's not too big but if you know if it's you can use a french curve for that now you need to remember that if you add in a style line you need to add in seam allowance so that's why i have traced along that red line and i'm now going to add back in my 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance to that side and then I'll mark my pattern piece. So this is the skirt front and, and back. Cut to on fold. Fullness added. You can write down how much fullness you've added if you want to. And then the size. Mine's a size 6 because I went for the size 6 of the waist. So now we need to move the paper over a little bit. 
and we can trace our skirt side. So again, I'm tracing that red line that I drew in, my new style line. And then this is the side seam, which is a little bit curved, down to the hem, put in my notches and my match points. Okay. Again, I'm doing a really rough job because this is just half scale or, you know, miniature. So now that I've traced my piece, I need to remember, again, because I've added a style line, I need to put my seam allowance back in. So I'm adding my 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance to the other side of my cut line. And then this is the skirt side, front and back. We need to cut four of these because we need one for each front and then one for each back. So we need to cut four of those, size six, fullness added. And again, when you're labeling your pattern pieces, I would obviously put on the num number of the pattern that I'm using. So the McCall's 7319, I hope I've got that right. You know, you wanna put as much information on your pattern pieces as possible when you are relabeling them, especially if you're doing it like this, where you've done all the work on another piece of paper and you're retracing it. So none of your work is showing because you're retracing a fresh copy. So you want to make sure that you are labeling them as if you will get amnesia in 20 minutes and you won't know what you've done to your pattern pieces. We've gone from our initial quite narrow skirt piece, we've added all the fullness in, we have then got our skirt front which we're going to cut skirt front and back so we're going to cut two of those on the fold, one for the front one for the back and we've got our skirt sides and we need for front and back and we need four of those because we need to sew one to each side of our skirt front one to each side of our skirt back and then this is the side seam. We're going to gather up the top here and then this bit is going to be left flat to be put into the waistband. I hope that makes sense. If you cut a pattern piece apart, totally fine. You just need to remember to add your seam allowance. So when you sew them back together, you're ending up with the originally sized pattern piece. That's the important thing. I hope that's all made sense. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. Okay, as per usual, I am skipping around in the instructions. Now, if you've followed along with the cutting tutorial, you'll know that I have a three panel skirt rather than just the single panel. So I need to sew the center panels to the side panels matching up the notches. Then I can put in the gathering stitches to attach it to the under bodice. So I'm gonna get my skirt front sewn to my skirt side fronts and my skirt back sewn to my skirt side backs along the long lines and then I will be able to put the gathering and stitch gathering stitches in. I just wanted to say as well because I split my panels into three the double notches are the side seams I put a single notch into my two front panels but if you haven't put a notch in you want to remember that the double notches are going to be one of the last things that we sew so you want to sew the unnotched edges together unless as I say you've added your own single notch so the next thing that we want to do is reinforce the neck edge at the bodice front pivoting at the large circle and clip to large circles so we are just reinforcing this area here so that we can end up with two separate seam allowances because when we put our overlays on we will need to manipulate this area so that we can sew one side in without having to worry about the seam allowance still being stuck together. I'm going to stitch into the front and pivot at the large circle. I'm also going to do the same for the back and the back and the front pieces are very very similar so I like to put a pin in the back piece just so that I know which is the back and which is the front once I've taken the tissue paper off. The other thing I wanted to say before you take your pattern pieces off you want to make sure that you're marking in this large circle at the side. This will become very important later when we're putting in our overlays. Also the small circle at the waist. This is where the gathered area of our skirt will be gathered into and then this part here will be left nice and flat. This is the center large circle that I was just talking about that we need to sew up to and pivot. So I'm going to mark this in as well and then get that done for both the front and the back. If you're worried about sewing to an exact seam allowance, mark it in, I do. I've done this with a friction pen. So I have sewn up to the point pivoted and then I've snipped into this point. And as you can see, that's given me like a seam allowance here, a seam allowance there that I can treat independently, which we'll need because we have to fold and do lots of stuff with this bit coming up. But the first step is to sew the skirt to the front section of the bodice fronts 
and we're going to match the centers and symbols adjust gathers based stitch stitch again quarter of an inch away in seam allowance and press the seam up so i'm doing mine on my overlocker but again you don't have to do that you just need to use a stretch stitch that will allow the garment to actually stretch and this is an important seam that will stretch as you put the garment on and off so you do need to make sure that this is a stretchy seam so we're going to sew this at five eighths of an inch we're going to pull the gathers and match up the gathering section two and mine's all roly which is fun but we're going to match, match up the gathering section to the little dots that we put in there are notches as well and the side seams from here to here it should be nice and flat and then all the gathers should be in the middle i'm going to do that for the front and back okay so with right sides together i have the skirt pinned to the bodice as you can see i've gathered up this central section when i split the skirt apart and added the fullness i decided that i was going to put the seam allowance in where the gathering section came so we've got nice flat sides here and then all the gathering at the front which should give us a really nice flare under the overlays that go on top of the bodice so i'm gonna get this sewn in five eighths of an inch just to let you know as well when i put my gathering stitches in i did it with a straight stitch the longest one my machine would do first row was three eighths of an inch away from the raw edge and the next one was three eighths of an inch away from that which means my actual stitching line is in here but i find that this gives me the nice neatest gathers because as you can see they're nice and corralled between those two lines of stitching i have checked that my fabric will recover from having needles put through it so once this is sewn i will then remove this bottom layer of gathering and i shouldn't up with some really nice neat gathers in the actual seam line here if you do do this method you want to make sure that your fabric will recover from having the stitching put into it and then removed i have my pins to mark my back pieces and as you can see or i think you can see the gathering stitching is still in here so i need to remove this and once i've removed it all which i'm just going to do really gently with my stitch ripper i don't really like to pull on these kinds of stitches in this kind of fabric because I just don't want everything to stretch or anything to get like snagged or anything so I kind of go through and I will break the stitching and then pull out a little bit bit at a time so I'm going to do that the whole way across once that's done I'm going to press the seam towards the bodice on both the back and the front okay so now we're getting into the slightly complicated but not really parts they just look a bit weird and once you've worked out where they go and what they do everything's going to be fine we've got the front overlay now the first sentence is finish upper edge of front overlay self-facing i actually think that's a bit weird because we want to reinforce and then clip into the overlay to then be able to finish this edge but this is not the way that the instructions have told us to do it so okay but then the next section is reinforce inner corner of front overlay pivoting at large circle as shown slashing a long line two circles we need to basically clip from this kind of corner to the large circle so that we can free up both of these seam allowances again so that they can get put into the garment in a correct way and we can actually meet up and stitch to and secure things to this pivot point here i have reinforced this edge and i'm going to show you what that looks like i marked in my pivot point and i have sewn along here i haven't pivoted at the corner because as i say we are going to cut from this edge here to the pivot point but not through the stitching and that will allow us to then finish this edge the next step is number five and it says make five eighths of an inch narrow hem at lower edge of front overlay so what i like to do is i actually like to overlock this and then i press it under and i am going to stitch with a straight stitch um a 3.5 rather than the usual 2.5 straight stitch along here because again this area won't have much stretch on it so I have found that I haven't popped any stitches with straight stitch in this area so I have overlocked the edge and you will see here this little piece here so that's the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance I've pressed it under and I'm now going to stitch this down so that this is secured and once I've clipped into this corner, I'm then going to overlock this edge here because this is another edge that will be left free in the final garment. We won't do anything to this, it just gets turned under, but this edge gets sewn to the neck edge of our bodice front that we sewed to our skirt pieces earlier. I got very confused the first time I did this. Don't worry, it is a little bit confusing, 
but the way I found to kind of help myself out of it was to kind of look at it as as the so this is the armhole this is the shoulder seam that's the front neck edge this is a neck edge this is a side seam that's going to get gathered and then this is the other side seam and this is the bottom edge believe me I think I hemmed this edge a couple of times I got it all very very wrong but if I lay my pattern piece out the same way that it looks on the instructions and then follow it from there and this is the right side up so I've got the right side up here it just makes everything like if you lay it all out and look at it the same way that this does you can match up the notches because we have notches all over the place it will help you to make sure that you're putting it in the right place obviously you will also have marked all your notches and circles and gather points and such on the pattern piece themselves and transferred those over to your fabric pieces before you remove them from the pattern so i'm going to clip up to this notch which again it's marked there so i'm going to clip up to that then i'm going to finish this edge on the overlocker i actually think on my last one i didn't finish this edge at all you don't technically need to if your fabric is doesn't unravel and behaves itself because some knit fabrics can unravel so you want to make sure that if you are not finishing the edges that they will behave themselves and stay stable so i'm going to get that that done and then I'll show you what it looks like. Next up we need to pin the right side of the front overlay sections to the wrong side of the front neck edge stitch ending stitching at the large circle and then we're going to under stitch the bodice front. We have got the right side of the overlay attached to the wrong side of the dress and we've got it attached from the shoulder seam to the large circle and this is where the large circle comes into play for the bodice and for the overlay. We are going to stitch from this point, well, from this point down to the large circle and back stitch. Then I am going to sew in the other side in the same manner. We're gonna make sure that this part doesn't get caught. So we want this to be nice and free. So once that's stitched in, we're then going to understitch everything over to the seam allowance and everything over to the lining area. And that will help us to fold everything to the right side and make sure that it all behaves itself and stays in place. We've got the right side of the overlay to the wrong side of the garment to the bodice and the skirt. We're going to sew from the shoulder seam to the large circle at 5 eighths of an inch back stitching at the beginning and at the end. We're going to do that for both front overlays. Okay so I have sewn the right side of the overlay to the wrong side of the bodice and I have now stitched all of the seam allowances to the lining and I've pivoted at the center there. I am going to just remove the stay stitching I did earlier just to reinforce up to that clip because it's now visible. Actually I might press first and see if it still will be visible once I've pressed because the under stitching might help it roll to the inside but we should end up with a really weird looking bit of fabric so we've got the neckline finish now and we've got two kind of like free flapping overlays with the neck edge as I say finished which needs to be pressed then we can move on to the next step which is turn front overlay sections to outside along seam lines and press which is what I just said we're going to do and then you need to turn the facing to the inside along the fold lines and baste the raw edge. I don't bother with the basting because we are then going to put gathering stitches in those edges but I will show you what this looks like once everything is pressed and folded into place properly so that I'm not just showing you a pile of fabric. Okay, I've got the pattern piece out again because this is the fold line where the facing from here to here will get folded under and then this is the edge that's going to get the gathering stitches put in so we can attach it to the bodice correctly in a minute. So I just wanted to make a note that this is where the facing, self-facing piece, this piece here, will get folded under to give us a nice folded edge along the top of the bodice here. <laughs> this is going to be difficult to show you but hopefully you can kind of get the idea of what we have here. So this is the bodice, this is the neckline, these are the facings. As I showed you there was a point where the facings needed to be turned under which I have done and then I have added gathering stitching down this side and then the corresponding side on the other piece. Now if we look at the pattern 
we want to be moving as we look at it so these are all the right sides we're going to put the right facing up and out of the way and we're going to take the left facing we're going to pin it into place at the underarm seam here matching up those notches and then we're going to take the, sa the facing and match it up with the large circle which is underneath the double notches on the other side pull the gathering stitches so that they're just above the double notches on the skirt so that's going to gather all this area in to give us a nice ruched effect and as I say we're folding up the right hand side and we're putting the left side down first and then we're going to repeat with the right side going over the top so as we're looking at it I'm going to take the right hand side which is the right hand side when you wear it the left hand side as you look at it we are going to take the left hand side as you wear it or the right hand side as you look at it and we're going to start pinning this into place so I like to start with doing the side seam and matching up the notches over here because everything does need to match up levelly so we've got the underarm seam here matching up grab my pins I'm going to pin this into place and this will get basted and this is one time where I will baste everything because otherwise you can get yourself into a right mess if you try and pin just pin things this occasion. So I have pinned my overlay and you will end up with it being quite a way up on the bodice, which is fine. And then over this side, on as you look at it, the left hand side, but the right hand side as you're wearing it. And I'm gonna have to move you over. So we've got the folded edge of our facing, which we talked about earlier. And that big dot there, which was the folded edge of our facing, is gonna match up with the big dot on our pattern piece, or sorry, our bodice piece. And we're gonna pin this into place. And then, and again, you're on my skirt, so move you over here. There we go, I think that works, doesn't it? Right. And then we've got the bottom of that overlay piece, and that is gonna get pinned into place just above the double notches on the skirt so I'm going to take this raw edge and get that pinned into place and once those two are positioned as you can see we've got the bottom and the top positioned I'm then going to pull on the gathering stitches to evenly distribute all of this fullness here into this area here so I'm going to do that off camera just because it's going to be a lot easier and I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like and then we're going to do exactly the same for the other side okay so everything has been gathered and pinned into place and now we're going to do exactly the same with the other side so we're going to bring this down and this side is just going to get pinned into place from the underarm down like that and then this side we will match up the large circle which is kind of around about there which you can't quite see but it promise you it's just about there so we're going to match up the uh, folded edge of the facing which if I can find it, <laughs> one-handed, this is so fun. Okay, we can do this, we can do this. Yeah, there we go. Folded edge of the facing gets matched up there. This edge gets put just above the double notch on the skirt. This all gets gathered into place and then we are going to run basting stitches at three eighths of an inch down both sides to put that all into place. And then we can move on to doing exactly the same, repeating all of these steps for the back panels. Everything is basted into place, as you can see here. So this is the front section done. I am now going to move on to the back section. Basically, we've got to do all of that again. Okay, so as you know, I've already done this step and this step. So we're moving on to step 14, finish up at edge of back overlay, which is this one here. Oh, my battery's dying two sec. So the first step of 14 is finish up at edge of back overlay, which is this edge here. Again, I have reinforced at the large circle or the inner corner of back overlay, pivoting at large circle is sewn and slash two line at large circle. So I did that first and then I have finished this edge because this edge is going to get sewn to the neckline so it will be finished. I've reinforced the stitching, cut up to the large circle there you can see that there then I have finished this top edge the next instruction is make a 5 8 of an inch narrow hem at lower edge of back overlay so again I have instead of doing a narrow hem I have overlocked the edge turned it under by 5 8 of an inch and stitched it down with a straight stitch and I used a 3.5 
a stitch instead of a 2.5 which is my usual construction method so it's just a little bit longer again this area won't have that much stretch put on it so I have found that this stitch works perfectly well in this area so I'm going to do that for this overlay and then the corresponding overlay that goes onto the other side and I've done all the same things so the next thing that we're going to do is attach it to the bodice of the neckline of the bodice in the same manner that we did with the front and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay so we're going to move on to step 16 which is pin right side of back overlay sections to wrong side of back at neck edge stitch ending stitching at large circles and then under stitch the bodice. So again we're repeating what we did on the front but we've got the right side of the overlay to the wrong side of the bodice the, which we've attached the skirt to and I've got it pinned from the shoulder seam to the large circle at the neck edge and I'm going to stitch at 5 eighths of an inch and back stitch at the beginning and the end then I'll pin the other one on and do the same and then I will under stitch the seam allowance. So now that I've got both of the overlays attached I'm under stitching all of the seam allowance to the lining so I have got all the seam allowance from the underlay and the bodice lining over to the lining side and I am stitching an eighth of an inch away from the seam line just to make sure that the lining all, always stays rolled into the inside of the dress and I'm doing that for the entirety of the neckline. Once we have understitched you want to bring the overlays over to the front of the dress and press the neckline. I haven't done that as yet because I haven't needed to. I'm going to do that when I come to sewing the shoulder seams together which isn't until step 23. So the next step is turn a self-facing to inside along fold lines and baste the raw edges into place. I have turned them in and again there was a large circle which marked where the facing should start. I've turned them in and pinned them. I'm not going to base them into place because the next step is to gather the side edges of back overlay between large and small circles and we're going to do that for both sides now which will also sew down and baste into place the self facings. So I'm going to run gathering stitches at 3 eighths of an inch from the raw edge and then 3 eighths of an inch in from that on both of the overlay sides so we've got this one here and this one here I'm going to get that done then we can get them pinned into place so this time as we're looking at it we're putting up the right hand side the right overlay so looking at it this one's going to go up and then we need to pin this side seam into place match up the notch or the large circle and then the bottom of the overlay just above the double notches and pull all the gathers as we did with the front. So I'll get that put into place and show you what it looks like. I have got everything pinned into place. The next step is to pin the right back overlay to the back left side edge matching symbols as shown, adjust gathers, baste and baste side edges. I'm going to bring down this overlay and then we've got the underarm seam that will match up over here and just about cover the top of this one and then we're going to match up the large circle to the folded edge of the self facing so this one will go here the bottom edge will go just above the double notches in the skirt pull the gathers pin that all into place and then I'm going to baste everything then we can sew the shoulder seams and now I have a nicely finished back panel as well so we can move on to sewing the shoulder seams again I am deviating from the pattern I don't think we should sew, sew the side seams up yet I don't think you should have to set in a stretch sleeve I think you should put them in flat and sew the side and underarm seam all in at once so we're going to skip ahead to step 23 open out overlay at shoulders pin front to back together at shoulders pin overlay edges together stitch in one continuous seam basically we're kind of like opening up the overlay and the shoulder seam like this and we're going to pin them together and stitch it all like that which will give us a nice finished edge at this neck edge here so I'm going to pin mine together and I'll show you what it looks like so I've got right sides of the dress together and I've opened out the shoulder seams and I've pinned them at the sewn edge usually I would try and nest these but the seam allowance is understitched so I can't so I'm just going to be really careful to match up the folded edge here I'm going to sew across here at 5 eighths of an inch same on this one with the overlocker and then turn that seam through and press it all flat then we can start on the sleeves the shoulder seams are sewn and when you turn it through and I'm going to need to give these a very good press but when we turn it through we should end up with 
something very neat on the outside but like I say it needs a press first so we're going to do that for the other side as well again once it's been pressed that will look really neat so the next thing that we can move on to is the sleeves I have pinned in my sleeve I've matched up the shoulder seam with the centre notch there's a double notch at the back single notch at the front I've matched up the underarms there is a little bit of ease between the double notch and the shoulder seam and the same for the front so I have just kind of stretched that into place if you feel that you won't be able to control the two layers of the overlay and the bodice then you might want to base the underarm into place before you put the sleeve in. I'm pretty confident I can get this to behave itself and I'm going to go slow to make sure that it does but I'm going to sew this seam at 5 eighths of an inch and I'm going to repeat for the other sleeve. Now I have got the sleeve sewn in I have pinned the underarm and the side seam and I'm going to sew that all in one go. I have matched up the bodice at the center front then I have also matched up the facings that are turned over there's notches uh, facings and then the overlays down the bottom here so it does get a little chunky in here because we've got the bodice the skirt and then the two overlays that are gathered so there is a little bit chunky in here but as long as you go slow it should all be fine so I'm going to sew this at 5 eighths of an inch and I'm going to repeat for the other side now that I have my side seams sewn up I can remove all the gathering stitches from the sides then I'm going to try it on then I'm going to hem it. I'm going to try it on first because I may wish to take the side seams in a little bit more. I have on previous ones but then they were made out of completely viscose jersey and as you guys know this has a cotton jersey lining. So I'm sewn it at 5 eighths of an inch for the underarm seams and the side seams. I'm going to try it on, see if I need to adjust it. If I don't I can then hem everything and we are done. I've tried it on, it fits beautifully so now I need to hem it. So I have gone over the raw edge of the hem with my overlocker and I've just turned that under and I'm going to use a straight stitch the same 3.5 length stitch length that I've been using for the entire dress so it will match up with the stitching on the overlays and I'm going to hem the skirt like that then I am going to use my cover stitch or a zigzag stitch depending on how lazy I am to sew in the arm hem because this area is going to have a little bit of stretch in it. This fitted very nicely to my arm and didn't stretch over my arm but I do sometimes push these sleeves up my arm and if I do that it will need some stretch in it so I'll either need to do a zigzag stitch or get my cover stitch out to hem the sleeve with that but then we are done and I am so over the moon with this dress so so happy with it. So if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I love this dress I have two more planned of the fabrics that I actually own. I can see myself buying more fabric to make more of these in the future. I quite happily have 14 or 15 of these like I do with my scuba dresses. I, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm so glad that I persevered because I got this dress which is what I wanted and I'm so glad that they put this illustration on the envelope because if they hadn't I wouldn't have bought it off the strength of this one. This is gorgeous. Th not that this isn't gorgeous it's just not for me. I don't like skirts that are that kind of straight up and down. Again personal preference. Very glad that I have persevered with this dress. It's taken six iterations to get it to the perfect dress for me but I am there now and there will be more. There will be many many more. <laughs> So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.